Hi, his nibs here with uh, a look at a fairly new model from Jinhao in China, which I'm calling the uh, Ebony Jewel because of this glossy black jewel or tassy on the cap top. And this pen is uh, basically takes most of its design cues from the Lamy Safari but with some obvious differences as well. Uh, the cap top is quite different than the Lamy. The clip is also noticeably different and it has Jin Hao prominently displayed on the barrel. Now this comes in, at least the ones I have, seven different solid colors. Quick look at those. As well as three demonstrators. I won't say they're transparent because they are colored, but you can clearly see the ink in them when filled. So, in a moment, let's take a closer look at a couple of these and see how they write. Okay, see one you like? <laughs> these uh, come in what I've called, just to run through them quickly, glacial white. That is uh, Amber Demo, Blue Demo, Cobalt Blue, one of the solid colors, Lime Green, Canary Yellow, Ruby Red, Jet Black, Smoky Demo, kind of a, a grayish black, and Orange. Now these are uh, really full-size pens. Let's get a quick measurement here. Capped, they're almost five and a half inches. Posted, we come in at almost six and a half. And with cap held aside, a comfortable five and an eighth. Uh, these are all plastic pens, so if you're someone who likes to post, uh, weight is not an issue. And really, because these are, are light pens, balance is not an issue. I find them equally comfortable with posted cap or cap held aside. As you can see, even with cap held aside, this is a good size pen. And like the uh, like the Lamy, the section has these cut in areas of the section for your thumb and index finger. Makes for a very comfortable grip and writing. The Solid pens, as you can see, have a little ink view window so that you can see the amount of ink still left in your converter. And these will also take uh, international style carts, cartridges, such as uh, those from Private Reserve.
Jin Hao prominently displayed on the barrel. And again, the, uh, the cap top varies, uh, is totally different than the, the Lamy Safari and prompted me to name this the Ebony Jewel series of pens. And the clip, although from the side they look somewhat like the, the Lamy, the Lamy is more like, uh, if you're not familiar with it, two very thin strips, uh, almost, uh, oh, how to describe it, almost like a paper clip in appearance. Whereas here, uh, with the Ebony Jewel, we have a flattened clip, which I think is very nice looking, and has the Jin Hao Chariot logo at the top of it. And that's really the only adornment. The nib has Jin Hao and it's a spear type nib as you can see with a breather hole and their usual 18 GP standing for 18 karat uh, gold plated it's a steel nib whether it's actually been gold plated only they know for sure uh, recaps with a satisfying click and let's take one of the demonstrators. This is the uh, what I'm calling the Smoky. And maybe let me do the Amber just because it shows up a little bit better on the camera. And uh, even though the plastic is translucent with color as opposed to clear transparent, you can clearly see the piston converter inside. You still have the ink view window, but it doesn't really serve any extra purpose now because you can, you can see what's happening with your ink level right through the barrel and cap. These are really terrific uh, knock-around pens. Great to introduce uh, a new user to a, a really nice inexpensive fountain pen. Um, these run about uh, a third the price of the Lamy Safari. And uh, Writing characteristics to me are pretty much identical. Uh, I would describe, there's only one nib size, I would describe the nib size as a light medium. Uh, and in my terminology that means it, it falls in between a typical western fine and medium. And you can get some variation on that uh, through tine separation. Uh, and when you order these you can you can mention to me uh, what your preference is in that regard as, f as far as uh, flow of ink because like with all pens that leave uh, the palace at isnibs.com I examine and adjust every pen that goes out uh, if it needs it which the majority of pen nibs do doesn't matter how inexpensive or how expensive in fact probably statistically I have to adjust to expensive nibs, expensive pens, more frequently than inexpensive ones. So let's uh, get the brethren out of the way here and we'll ink one of these up. Put these aside for a moment. And let me grab a bottle of ink. Uh, okay. Private Reserve Sepia, which is a nice brown color. And 
this looks like it needs to be mixed a bit. I didn't notice that before. I'm going to have to examine that bottle more closely a little bit later. So let's keeping in the same vein let's uh, take private reserve chocolate this happens to be in the the larger bottle the larger dusty bottle sorry about that i just wanted to give you all a little thrill as the camera went flying through the air so removing the cap removing the barrel, removing the cap of the ink, hoping not to spill that. Since I'm on a little bit of an angle here, I have something under this pad. It's, I think, a, a bunch of pens. So we're not quite flat. Okay. So what you want to do whenever you're filling a, a piston or a um, piston converter such as this because it's a converter meaning it can be removed and you can convert it to a cartridge filled pen as well uh, normally what you would do is you would which I haven't done because I'm oh, all right I'm too lazy what you would normally do is you get a small bowl of water a uh, couple of drops of dishwashing detergent dishwashing liquid and you would run that solution through the nib the feed the section into the converter and do that a couple of times that just helps to clear out any um, remnants of manufacturing oils or little bits of plastic even sometimes in the uh, production of a feed and after doing that you do the same uh, filling and emptying several times with clear water. But we're going to live dangerously and go right for the ink and see if it's successful. So I'm going to screw the piston all the way down to uh, expel the majority of the air that is in the converter. I'm going to stick this in above the top of the nib, so a little bit of the section. And this really is on an angle. There we go. Hopefully that'll stay. And slowly turn the converter in the opposite direction to begin to fill it with ink and you can see let me bring this closer now uh, I've still got air trapped up in the top of the converter that's why while it's still submerged I'm going to do this a second time and sorry my fingers are blocking what I'm doing okay and this should expel most of that air and then turn clockwise again to bring the ink up into the converter. And let's see how we did. Yeah, it's almost filled. We could do it a third time if we cared to, to get really almost all of the air out. Um, now, some people will drop a couple of drops of ink back into the bottle. I think you can see that. That's what a lot of the old uh, fountain pen manuals recommended and suggested. Uh, others will talk about turning the pen nib up and now any air that's in it should go rise to the top and then turning the converter a little bit to expel that last bit of air in the converter. Different people use different techniques. Uh, 
But most important now is to wipe down the section because it's filled with ink. Unsightly ink on this yellow pen. And get the nib a little bit. And the most important process when filling a fountain pen is to close the bottle afterwards. Too many life-threatening accidents happen with an open bottle of ink. And screw back the barrel and let's see how this puppy behaves. So, this is the Jinhao Ebony Jewel. Very smooth nib. Now, as I always do before I send out any nib, any pen, or before I use one for myself, I examine the nib, uh, make any adjustments to the tines that I think are necessary, and so forth. So I did that with this pen uh, before filling as well, but this is actually the first time I'm writing with it. And this is in canary yellow. And I'm calling the nib a light medium, which is falling in between a fine and medium. Now I opened the tines a little bit on this particular pen before I filled it. Um, so this is more shading more towards uh, the medium end of the spectrum. But we could get a finer line by closing the tines a bit as well. Um, a little bit of line variation with pressure, but that's not really what these nibs are designed for. So it's, it's going to lay down pretty consistent line uh, every time. And not especially wet, but that's partially the, the nature of this ink and also the fact that the tine separation isn't that great but it's has no trouble keeping up with the fastest writing I can produce there are no skips and it remains very very smooth and that's my artistic representation of a mm, porcupine so, two eyes there, and a nose, and a tail, and some legs. And you see why my older brother is the cartoonist, and I am not. So there you have the Ebony Jewel. Jin Hao. This one canary yellow. And nine other colors to choose from. Excuse me, to choose from. I got choked up there for a moment by all the choices available to us. So thanks again for uh, taking a look at the Jin Hao. There we go. I'm a sucker for orange pens. Orange is my favorite color. Uh, for the uh, Jin Hao Ebony Jewel. And you can see more details and photos of all the models available 
on the hisnims.com website. Thanks a lot. Take care.